Hello everybody, this is Desert Reptile 98. I'm just going to give you a quick video of my turtles. But let me show you something on my my, uh, my iguana cage. Um, this is my iguana cage. You've seen it before. If you haven't, check out my other videos where I built it from one day to the other. How it looked before and how it looked after. I have a both, uh, both videos and how it looks. And I have a brick in there with a pump in there that irritates the water. So that way if she wants to drink, she can go ahead and drink. And I've seen her drink before, so... It works, so it's cool. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I took off the sideboards, so that way she has more room because she's getting bigger. And she just, she doesn't like to be so crowded. She gets some light, and they're good in the morning and and the afternoon. Not so much during the high rise sun, which is good because it's hot here in the desert. And speaking of the iguana, she's over there walking. I don't know why she likes to go over there. Let me go ahead and move her out. So this is her. It's the iguana. Let's see if I can grab her real quick. There you go. So I'll just let her go that way. She'll be okay. She's getting a lot bigger, as you can see. But this video is not about her, it's about my turtles. Now, it rained like a lot yesterday, like so lot. Like it flooded the whole area. So what I did the day before it flooded was I created new holes, new stuff, planted some new plants. One of the holes is this hole right here. Uh, I dug it more so that way the big turtle Texas could fit in there. And you can see I think Veloss is in there right now. There's Veloss. She gets some nice shade and coolness from the hot sun. So she's right there. She likes it. She gets some sunlight back here. As you can see. But that one is a hole that didn't flood. It just got really wet. So I'm happy with the way it came out. Because they like it. They like to go in there a lot. And um, that's their food dish. You go over here. This is some ivy I planted. Some nice ivy starting to take to the ground as you can see from the little tiny ivy that's growing hopefully it spreads out it covers this whole area yeah some ivy i don't know if i showed you that already so i'm putting it in the video and then you can see the uh, bermuda grass has grown a lot uh it sprouted really good especially with the rain it's gonna grow like crazy now and it's good and I hope it does spread a lot. And you can see it's growing in patches there, there. These two big patches, some other patches over here. And that other patch right there. And then some other ones over there. Yeah, I'll, I'll show a close up to the little ones. But then this is a water dish. I always like to keep my ornate box turtles hydrated, even though they're native to the desert. Because they, uh, ornate box turtles are native to parts of Texas, Arizona, and, uh, states around texas more in the southwest and you can see uh this hole it collapsed let me lift this thing up for this hole collapsed i stepped on it yesterday on accident before it rained and um yeah you can see sidious has been busy digging up this hole he likes it the way he likes it See, this has been real busy, making it real deep. He's been digging all day because uh, he knows his, his uh, room has been tampered with. And I don't think he likes that very much. You can see the Sidious is right there. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put this. Let him continue digging. Put that. And today I planted... Uh, this baby. Hopefully it takes to where I planted it. Hope it takes really good. Hopefully it grows nice. It spreads out. Yeah, so that, that one should be nice. And I'll show you why I picked a certain places I put it in. This is Texas right here. The biggest ornate box that I have for right now. And she is laid clutches of eggs already. 
hopefully some more in that hole. That's why she doesn't go in there anymore because uh, she uh, laid eggs there once and I think she laid her eggs there again. And that's why she no longer goes in that hole. And I thought it collapsed the first time, but she ended up covering it. So I found out later by cracking two eggs, but yeah. Uh, that's why she didn't go in there. And it gets real crowded um, because, you know, she covered most of the hole and Sidious, the turtle, was digging in there. He kind of dug a little bit, but she didn't fit in there. So yeah, as you can see. Donatello, the Veloc is getting out of the cave and Donatello right there eating some uh, some dog food yeah so let me take you to the hole I built for Texas or dug up for Texas or lazy bone aka so I put this because yesterday this thing completely flooded uh, I wasn't expecting that much rain that much inches of rain and man flooded this com this whole area really good so yeah this is her hole and hopefully she uses it later on to hibernate it goes deeper in there but not too much to where i could see but yeah and i put this on here because oh it is it's held up by a stick and a brick i put that up there because uh when it rained yesterday it just didn't even give her time to get out so it was getting flooded before she got out and I don't want that for my turtles I want them to be safe before anything so I put this so that way it trickles down in there and also created this uh, yesterday this mounds of uh, the dirt I pulled out I put it all around so that way when it rains it isn't all rush in there at once it kind of just seeps in there giving her time to get out, drink some rain, or do whatever, go to safety, find another hole, whatever she wants to do. And yeah, that's the hole. And then let me show you uh, this turtle. She is eating dog food. In dog food. What's cool about ornate box turtles or western box turtles is they have this line that goes, you can see them better in this one. They have this line that goes from their head all the way to their tail, and that just shows where their spine connects onto the carapace, which is really cool. But when they're babies, as you can see, they're more like splotches and like not real definite to where you can see their lines. But as they get older, it starts to you, you start to see the lines are more finer and definite. And then they get from that size, splotches, to so-so lines. And then I can't bring Sidious out, but you can see his lines are more definite. And then it goes to splotches again when they're older because they start to weather down. You can see the line, though. It goes from their tail. There's a tail right there all the way to their head and that just shows where the spine connects on their carapace at the bottom I don't think anything special in there but they have some design there too yeah that's what's cool about the ornate box turtles now some of the things I planted and why I planted them there because I know these are desert species and can be forest species because they're found all over Texas well, they're endangered, but they used to be found all over Texas, and which is including El Paso, Texas, which is a desert. And this place looked like a desert. It was just brown like that. Well, not that dark, but lighter brown. Look deserted. And even a cracked cactus grew there. That Hispanic cactus. So uh, I wanted to add more plants to it because to make it look, look more... Um, lively and vivid but I planted some Bermuda grass so it could look more natural they could cool down in it they can hide in there they can eat the Bermuda grass if they want to which is good and uh, since there's not a lot of space in here and it hasn't really gotten that hot in this 
pen because of the trees provide a, enough shade for them to be active throughout the whole day. Get playing fast. The trees provide enough shade for them to be active out throughout the whole day, so there's no need to burrow and hide away from the sun. They can just come out and eat, look for bugs, drink, do whatever they want. And uh, that right there, the ivy I planted, one over there too. I planted them because uh, that way it could spread out, look more nice, look more green. And they could also hide under there, or, you know, look for cover, lay their eggs under, you know, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, it's Mike Guan. I don't know if you heard that. Hopefully, he did hear that because that was Mike Guan. He's making his waste on the grass, giving back to the earth. But yeah, uh, those those uh, hopefully will grow into nice, spread out uh, ivy, provide providing cover for the turtles and later on the hatchlings if they do come out. So that'll be good. And then. Uh, or they like to hide under there for coolness or, you know, for shade if it gets too hot. Because over here in the desert, it does reach about 100, 104 degrees. This year, I think the highest was like 114 or 112. And that was like the middle of July. But luckily, you have these burrows. So if it does reach that temperature again, they get to hide in there for keep cool or keep warm. Because in the winter, the winter's coming and these guys need to hibernate. I, I know this one's going to hibernate, hopefully in there, because I've dug it deep enough. Uh, I'm not sure about the small one. I'm going to let it catch up to uh, Veloc and Sidious. That way it can be the same size as them by next year. Because uh, he hasn't he hasn't grown. Because he hibernated the, his very first winter and mine didn't. They just kind of ate and ate and ate. And that's why they're so big. And they're the same age. Uh, I don't know where... Donatello is. Let me show you the size comparison of Donatello. Oh, I think he went in the. I think. Nah, it's okay. I'll let him dig. But yeah. And I think it looks cool. Looks nice. With the pine needles and stuff. And then that rat right there with the wood and the, and the green. It looks real nice. It looks nice. And the, the turtles can go in there, hide in there and stuff. So I don't mind them doing that. That's one of the reasons I put the the ivy there and the Bermuda grass is just so they can have some type of turf you know so they can they can also eat this grass so it's kind of good for them too so it provides food source if I'm not here or something but it also provides them cover and coolness for the summer comes for when the summer comes excuse me and then this cactus over here I liked it I like it a lot because if a predator comes you know a cat a rabbit squirrel if any if there's any rabbit squirrel out there that wants to get to my turtles or attack them um, this cactus will provide protection for my turtle big turtle Texas Let's see here just curious it'll provide pr protection for her any cat tries to go in there you, you can look at this right here look how sharp it is try to focus on there that's pretty sharp that goes through my skin like nothing so uh, no cat is safe from this cactus. That's why I have it spread out like this. It looks cool too. Provides protection for her. She can go in there and the cat tries to come, it gets stabbed. So that's one of the main reasons for this cactus and why I haven't pulled it out. So yeah. And then over here, I have another cactus that I got from Walmart uh, for the food. And I dug it in about quarter maybe more than a quarter in so that way when uh if it does grow i could provide food more food uh, variety for my turtles because i don't think they've ever had tasted cactus and i put it outside the enclosure so that way they don't eat it right away because they will eat it no matter what and yeah i know uh since these are desert species they should like cactus provides good uh, Melabolic uh, hydration for them. You can see Veloz, he's out getting his, getting her basking area, getting some sunlight. 
Oh, balance. Huh. Like a balance. That's nice. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. These guys will do good in here. They should last me about a good couple, good uh, century, about, I guess. Not century, but what the hell do you call it? Decade. There you go. Good decade. You can see I put another board on top. Because I was thinking of putting my bearded dragon in here, but no, it's too risky. So I was like, nah, I'll just leave it like that. It's good enough for the turtles. Perfect for turtles. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, little things have changed, you know, little plants have been added in. And I should be adding another bush, because like, as you can see, you can see there's green in that corner, and there's going to be some Bermuda grass growing around there. So it'll be kind of green. Bermuda grass is growing good here, and right there, be good. And right here, the ivy's here, it'll spread out on the tree or on the floor, it'll be okay. And over here, it's kind of um, okay for right now because there's a digging area. And so that kind of just leaves me with this space right here because there's no green here until, because of that one. Later on it grows. So not until you get to that corner where it has a little ivy and the, the cactus. And that cactus over there. So this, so this big area is what I need to fill in with some green or some shrubbery. And I'm thinking I'm going to get a big shrub, big bush um, to cover this area. So that way the turtles can lay their eggs under, run and hide for protection, run and hide from the elements. They'll do pretty good. And yeah, so they should be okay for right now. But uh, I'm sure we had like maybe a hibiscus tree, maybe. No, I need more sunlight. Oh, some type of shrub there. But I'll update you when I put it in. But as for right now, the turtles are doing good. And you can see they're pretty active. They're always going to be pretty active because the trees blocks away most of the heat. And from there, when the sun's shining over here to when the sun shines over here, you can see a big drop in temperature. Over there, it could be like 95, 100 degrees. And over here, it'll be like a good 84, 85 degrees because of the shade. And I do wet it a lot. So that way, they can stay hydrated and stay active. Not too much so where it creates mold and stuff, but just enough so it can cool down, be away from the heat. Because, cause, you know, this is man-made, you know, concrete absorbs the heat a lot, creates a lot too much heat. So anywhere in that concrete could create 100, 115 degrees, you know, and I don't want that. Especially for these turtles, it's too hot for them. I just want it just right so where they can breed, they can eat, they can sleep happy and be healthy. That's all I want. So yeah. That's pretty much it. Maybe she wants some food.